What? Good YouTube, and welcome to the house. Before we get into today's Market Watch, I want to shout out that I am doing a Tournament of Madness tomorrow, if you haven't been one, and I think it's over a dozen of them now. Basically, $5 bans any card all tournament long, and then $15 unbans a card not that anyone else is banned, those stay banned, but from the Forbidden and limited list to three during one round and one round only. So you can also unarata cards that used to be banned, such as Chaos Emperor Dragon. Round four is usually survive the round. And it's kind of funny and awesome to see like moments such as Buster Blader lock versus freaking full power dragon rulers in the blader slaying the dragons. If you're interested in that at all, it will be 8 p.m. Central Time tomorrow, Friday, if you're watching right now. And it will go until the tournament finishes so be ready to play all night but it's a pretty good weekend to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and if you just want to watch take a part there's that but we have amazing prizes if you know free tournament wasn't enough first place will have their choice of either an amazing play mat this actually has like a bit of a holographic sheen woven into it but the remote dual battle royale heavenly prison but if you're not a lockdown guy or gal right this is one of my favorite play mats you can choose one one of these two mats or $200 tier zero credit. I am very much a fan of both of the play mats I'm giving away. I always like to give away things I would truly want to be winning as a player. Second place gets sloppy seconds. They either get that $200 credit if first place took a play mat or they get their choice of play mat if first place ended up taking the credit instead. And there will be a third place prize as well. Details in the Discord as well as uh, there will be signups on the Facebook. That being said let's get into today's market watch starting with something that had a lot of FOMO at the beginning Dark Magician I'm seeing people in the discord really shocked this is not even triple digits at this moment and I do think we're headed towards a bottom out on this I think this is maybe near it and I'll explain why I think so we have another collectible coming out that is going to fill out this line of Baboomer nostalgia because this is like a throwback to his original art and it is one out of 1.5 cases about the ratio may actually be a little better than that because it it appears anywhere in the case so initial pulling of trying to find the ones that have been pulled maybe people did actually pull even more than that but if you recall there were rumors shouted out that there's one out of every six cases oh my gosh this is insane it's a modern day crazy collectible and it turned it out to not be that rare right like people over panic that's why you wait for solid case numbers and why i wait to report i even said during that era my initial polling is showing different but like people are going crazy over this number and buying in you can see the peak market price on tcg player recorded is 180 but they did sell for a little higher even on here versus that and i want to point to another dark magician that does have a really awesome art that there's definitely more of them out there than this dark magician although how many cases really have sold versus that thracia we don't have those numbers right and then in english because english is usually the king copy of a collectible but how many english cases have sold seven thousand 25,000 how many you know we don't have that data right but jump subscriptions sell in the like 50s of thousands crazy numbers so there's a ton of this out there but it's had time to age it's a kazuki takahashi art which also kind of mixes with the anniversary collection another line and while there's more of it in total it's still around 75 76 dollars a pretty darn close price to this and you might recall dragoon juiced a lot of dark magician collectibles because people wanted to be sending certain versions to the graveyard and this was among those buyouts where it was 125 i think peak even 140 so people went after this in mass already making it disappear from the market and now it's coming back but it still gets sales rates in this 80 dollar range most recently right there so i do think while i'm not a financial advisor i don't know the future of cards since this has something else that will be the most opened product of the year with a relatable collectible line to it now's a pretty good time to get it using that tcg player link in the description down below costing you nothing extra to support the channel direct 
directly for the cards you'd already be buying. We've seen it fall from 150, 125, down to under triple digits. I don't see it falling too much more during the summer. And then where it really picks up, in my opinion, is that we have a Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, and Dark Magician Girl, very DM era S cards people will want to combine in their binders around it, unless you're just that DMG collector that only makes pages and pages upon those, and it's my wife who leave me alone. You're one of those? Okay, you do you. But there are people who like to do DM pages, Dark Magician pages, the blue eyes, red eyes, all over, and not just the DMG kind of page, right? So that's why I do think that these have had their times in the line. Like, this specific line is going to continue to actual bolster of ancient kind of nice arts and even have further collections like the dmg thing i think has an entire binder collection around it right i i know it does in the ocg i forget if we're getting that in the tcg but that entire line has a lot of focus on it and it's going to be in the most open product of the year where people will be reaching back and grabbing at least in my opinion let me know what you think do you disagree is it going to continue to go down is it going to be 60 dollars? is people just going to sleep and not really care about this aspect of the tens be all about the reprints i think that people probably will reach back towards it now evil twin trouble sunny is spiking and it's not just due to splite here on this one it's due to uh, you have Artinet Slay, which sends any monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, then target a monster your opponent controls with the same type, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, Pendulum, or Link, and shuffle it into the deck. Your opponent cannot activate monster effects in response to this. Then, this is, you can banish this card from your graveyard, send an evil twin monster from your hand, deck, or face up to the field of the graveyard, so people are playing an engine of just one or two evil twins, and then using this to send a card on the field to the graveyard, getting double removal, and this is the Starlight version. Remember, like, Starlight Fergie to buyouts when it was being played in Dogmatica, doubling down into Tribrigade, hitting multiple decks. Well, you have a Splite Live Twins, then you have people wanting to play it just for a double removal aspect that also goes into Evil Twin, Key C Kill, and the Leela Collector Rare getting bought out completely here as the brick of choice that they want to send. Basically, uh, must be special summoned from your hand or graveyard, so once it's in the graveyard, it can also be summoning itself by tributing any two Link monsters. If this card is special summoned, you can activate this effect. If your opponent controls three or more cards, they must send cards to the graveyard so that they control two cards. So if you've already taken care of two cards and they somehow have a lot more after Archinate Slay and you have the Evil Twin Trouble Sunny effects going off, this further is able to do things if you have all those. I feel like you would just link up into Access Code Talker or something at that point, right? Unless you're on like some Cyverse deck using this as some kind of removal. But different people, different needs. I think that this having more multiple decks has more protection which is why it's up proportionally so much more almost all the way to four hundred dollars and this is a relatively fresh buyout that you play as a brick as a one of and is optional in the actual evil twin decks yeah i don't really respect this buyout as much cool artwork cool version but be aware that's why the buyout is happening nimble angler speaking of a slight is seeing itself spike back up it only has one printing is able to do generic fun splite stuff toad stuff all that well not necessarily toad it gets played in decks that play toad is my point but basically nimble angler is going up in price basically due to Slight and it being a level 2 tour guide for that sort of stuff. If this card is sent from hand or deck to the graveyard, you can special summon up to two level 3 or lower Nimble Angler monsters from your deck, or Nimble monsters from your deck, except for Nimble Angler. So you play the other level 2 uh, Nimbles. Although you can do the threes, that's not what you're doing. Exo Sisters are getting many more buyouts. Packs is up even further in price than when we last feature it. Sophia Collector Rare is getting bought out. Mac Hollis is getting bought out, and Magnifica is even up a little more in price for the Starlight, so be aware people are very excited for this deck, and a lot of attention is on those future metas rather than the current Nationals 2022 meta, but one thing going up is called by the Grave consistently, and you can see the most recent kind of spike up there on the first edition the version. The Unlimited 10s, I think we're only in the EU for this, but we do see it around $11, $12, and... You know, we have the tens also having hand traps, so if you have Prismatic Called by the Grave, stopping Prismatic Hand Traps, kind of a good feeling, isn't it, if it actually plays out that way? But yeah, I've had this on my Penny Stonk radar forever when it was back at $4, and it has aged very well and very consistently up. 
max rarity staples will end up doing that even as one ofs right Raffi on the time lord is up in price apparently because of a farfa otk video i haven't got to sit down and watch it but memes into money has been a consistent theme that's what my discord told me let me know if there's a different reason that this is actually up in price other than farfa haha he who funny we have a big discussion on different engines deflating in price right now in the current metagame and if you haven't sensed the themes of the market to watch yet people are very much looking to the future metas and abandoning the current if they're not playing in the 2022 nationals and if they are they most likely already have the deck that they're going to be on right so we see that the regulus is way down in price people now selling it just under 50 dollars most of them are at 55 though and in general the theorians are down in price my pick of berea is back down and that's because people that are going for techs in the current format or consistent decks or that kind of thing or even like you know tier two decks they're starting to lay off the gas and look towards well splites coming exo sister good a shizu tier element good well where's all this going to fall and it's going to be trying to punch up against a very different game than this diverse meta that has a lot of different win buttons again our ban list will be different than the ocgs different things might be able to slip through but the confidence is leaving and with that a lot more willing sellers on these cards are appearing or a lot less buyers versus the vendors that are putting these on the market versus demand that's why we see this all the way back down towards you know eight dollars for the theory on the field spell i'm not too surprised though it started at five during the buyout and i said even if it falls all the way to eight the people that bought it out are still making money versus initial but they've likely sold it at this point for a little more like 12 or something right then you see libromancer fire all the way back down towards six dollars i really like this deck it's a fun otk deck that has a lot of different movements but yeah, it's just that a rogue deck that people... I, I actually want to take a different note here. I'm actually really glad these are down in price to where it is. I think Rogue for a long time has been overinflated in price and the threat of a triangle slash tier zero format that is going to be developing in the future potentially has so many people shook that they're finally letting Rogue be priced how Rogue should be played and not to go all idealistic in the market watch but I think that's a very good thing and healthy for the market overall to have playable Rogue options in a current nationals format where you can try to punch up rather than trying to you know have everything versus a tier zero deck i like that a lot lot more we also have the fish and gage and then the marin sauce these are two archetype slash types that i think could be worth a little more and a lot of people feel like they're undervalued i play tested a lot more against marinsas and my view has changed it's a solid tier two deck maybe even punching up to 1.5 but realistically tier two it's way more consistent than i gave it credit for but at the same time faces its issues versus the current meta decks breaking boards and that sort of thing but has tools that are way more appreciative at least in my mind and I think that the old stuff is probably where the value's at, which is what's happening, Marinsis, Blue Slug, etc. But again, how is it going to interact in the future metagame? And that's why it's staying cheap, and I think that is overall a good thing versus just money, money, money in these cards. Look, the box, not worth a lot. People want to get rid of it. The top end, probably a little undervalued, but again, versus the future metagame where everybody's looking and pumping their money into continuously through the market that's really what's happening right now thanks for watching today's market watch please subscribe if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the conversation be sure to check out the tournament of madness even if you're just a viewer tomorrow watching all these people do the deck building challenges is so awesome on my end to because like that's a huge part of my streams where people make me deck build watching everybody round after round have to not only perform in players but consistently flip on deck building by the way it's on dueling books so it's not like pay to win it's not master duel it's you have access to free cards you have to adapt it should be very very fun tomorrow thanks for watching everybody